Hello everyone. Hope you are all doing well. So today we'll study about the different data types. We have already covered a lot of ground initially. So before we move to the libraries, which is still a long way ahead, we today will cover three major data types, uh, booleans, lists, and dictionaries. And in the next video, we will cover about tuples, about strings. So today we'll start with booleans, lists, and dictionaries. So when we talk about booleans, booleans is pretty easy. So it's true or false. So it's either zero or one. You generally represent false by zero and true by one. So Boolean values, these are all represented by one of the two constant objects. So true and false are the two constant objects. So it's either true or it's false. So it's pretty straightforward. So let's say if I write true, it gives me true. And if I write false, it gives me false. So if it's true, it's true. If it's false, it's false. Now let's say that your fire claim is 100, wind claim is 200, and we'll see whether our fire claim is equal to wind claim. And because it's not, so equal to equal to is generally used to find the equality. So whether something A is equal to B or not, you write with equal to equal to, which is a double equal to sign. So print fire claim is equal to equal to wind claim. This is false. But if this was also 100, then it says true. So it's just all about comparison. Same way you can check whatever this code will generate. So try to solve this yourself. It should be straightforward. So let's say our fire claim equal 20 our wind share claim equal 30 and i want to check whether my fire claim is less than my wind share claim so as i told you it's case sensitive so your fire claim is less than but if i say whether it is equal to it will say no it's not equal so just need to remember that in booleans it's either true or false and you just compare two variables according to that now after this we come to the most important type of data type which you will use frequently and this is the one which you will majorly use apart from dictionaries which is what we call list so list is nothing but it's just a collection of objects these objects are ordered. They have a certain order, which is assigned by the Python kernel or in the heap space behind in the Python, it is already ordered. It has a number, which we call index, which we'll see later on. But a list is a collection, which is ordered. Just remember for now it is ordered and it is changeable. You can change the numbers and yes, your list allows duplicate numbers. So when I say my list is one, two, three, and I print my list, it says my list is one, two, three. But if I say my list is one, one, two, three, then that will say, yes, your list is one, one, two, three. So you can have as many duplicate numbers as you want to have. And once you will check your type of the list. So when we say, what is the type of the list, which I created, then you will see that this is a list. So your type of a list is your list. Now, the benefit of a list is that in a list, you can have mixed amount of data types. It's not necessary to have just one type of a data type. You can have strings, booleans, integers, floats. You can everything have everything inside one single list. So when I say my list is, let's say, a number two, a string fire, and another number five. And I say, okay, this is my list. And when I see my list, will tell me it contains two, it contains fire, it contains five. You can also have a nested list. You can have a list inside your list. So let's say I say my list is fire and my list contains also another list of three, six, and seven. So I have this list. Once I print this list, 
then my list comes out to be fire and another list of three integers, three, six, and seven. So you can contain a list inside a list and create multiple nested lists, which will help you later on. Now, what if I want to access a specific element in the list? Now, when you want to access a specific element out of this list, let's say if I just want fire out of this list, then I will call, I'm going to index my list. So every one of these has a number. So if I say my list is two, fire and five, if this is my list, every one of this has a number. So it starts with zero. So if I say my list with an index zero, it's two, with an index one, it's fire, with an index two, it's five. So your numbers in an index, your index of your list, it starts with zero. So zero, one, two. So let's say I say, give me the first index of my list. Then if I print this, it'll give me the first index of my list. It will give me fire. So the first index of my list is zero, one fire, two five. So my list with index one is nothing but fire. Now, what if I want to index my nested list? So let's say I have a list with fire and another list inside it, three, six, seven, and then another list inside it with wind five and six. So when I say my list with second index, so my list, this is zero, this is one, and this is two. So my list with second index is this. Now my list with second index and whatever is the output, what is the zeroth index of that? So my list, this is the second index and the zeroth index of this is wind. So therefore your answer is wind. So my list and then whatever index you want to get a whole list and then whatever is the index in the list which you have sliced out of your list. So that's how your indexes in the list work. So if I say that print my list uh, with the print my list with the index one and then another index one, what do you think it will be? So what it does is my list, this is my list, first index, this is zero, this is first. And inside the list, what is the first index? Six. So print my list, first index, and then whatever is the output, the first index of that. Same way, if I say print my list two, it will say it's went five, six. Now, if I say, give me the zero at sub index of this, it will give me win. So basically what you need to remember here is that whenever you're indexing a list, you can take out a list out of a list, and then you can take any particular index of the list, which you have sliced out. So this is an important concept, which you need to understand. Now, what we did is we did a positive indexing same way. Every one of this has a negative indexes. So this is negative one, negative two, negative three. It doesn't start from zero. It starts with negative one. So when you're uh, printing a list from the back side of it, then it's negative one. So when I say print my list negative two, so it should give me fire. It gives me fire because it's minus one index and this is the minus two index. So therefore, Negative indexing is also pretty important. Now we'll see another concept called list slicing. So list slicing means getting multiple objects out of a list. Till now, what we were doing is we were taking out only a single element out of the list. Now what we'll do is we'll take multiple sequences or multiple indexes out of the list. And that is what we call list slicing. So I have defined, let's say a new list, two, five, seven, fire, wind, blood, flood, sorry, and 15. And now if I say, give me my list, it says, this is what your list is. Now what we want, we want to obtain the elements starting from index three up to, and not including element with index six. So what I mean here is if I print my list from index three to six, what I'll get is zero, one, two, starting from here. It is index three, index four, index five, and it will go up to index six, but it will not include index six. So zero to N means print my list up to N minus one index. So three to six means 
give me three, four, and five, which is three, zero, one, two. Don't give any of this. Three, four, five, and because I've given six, it will exclude six. But if I also want to include fifteen, and I say give me three to seven, it gives me this also. So always remember that your list index from A to B will give you your index starting from A and ending with B, but not including B, right? So same way, let's say we want to have elements starting from index three, which is fire, up to wherever the list ends. So I'll say print my list starting from three, ending nowhere, wherever the list ends. Just give me the numbers. So it's a fire, wind, flood, and fifteen, which is basically three to seven. So what it does is three, four, five, six, and it says there is nothing at seven, so it will end it at six. And if you want a complete list. Then you can say print my list starting nowhere, ending nowhere, which will give you your list, which is nothing but your my list. So you can either print it directly like this, or start to end, start nowhere, end nowhere. That's how you do this. And the last thing which I would want to know is how do you take the length of a list? That I say I have a, a huge list. What is the length of my list? And the length of my list will be. So that's how you operate with your lists. So now what you do is you should try out this. You print the first, second, and the last element in the list below. Print all the elements, first three elements, and last three elements. I hope you'll be able to do this. If you are not able to do it, just comment in the section, comment section below, and I will post the solution with the code out there. So now I hope you know how to use your Booleans and your list. Now we'll come to another important part called your dictionary. So what you need to understand in your dictionary is your dictionary is of pairs. So difference between list and dictionary is in a list everything is on its own, but in a dictionary every value has a key to it. So I'll say my dictionary key one value one key two value two key three value three. So it's a key value pair. So if I say that okay, high risk, high risk corresponding to fire and uh, flood. So it will say if I say high risk, it will give me the values fire and flood. So you can group your values into a certain key, and that's how you define a dictionary. It's a collection of key value pairs, and all these keys map to a certain value. So remember that values might be duplicate. But keys are always unique. You can't have duplicate keys, but you can have duplicate values. So your keys are unique within a dictionary, while your values might or might not be unique. So now what we'll do is, let's say we define a dictionary using key value pairs, and I say this is my dictionary: key one, value one; key two, value two; key three, value three. Now. If I say give me my dictionary, it will say okay. Dictionary has three keys and three values. And always remember, whenever you want to check the type of something, you can simply use a type command, and it will tell you what is the type. So it says type of my dictionary is your dictionary. Now let's say I want to access the specific element of my dictionary. So in my dictionary, I want to have a specific element. Let's say I want to say, okay, what does my key to contain? So I'll simply type my dictionary, and then within the square brackets, key to, and it will give me value two. So all these values, they are given to a certain variable, which is this key. So these are all key value pairs. Now let's say we have defined a dictionary for a bank client, and we have all his assets, real estate, stocks, and savings. And when I say that print all these client assets, it will give me that real estate has one hundred fifty thousand, stocks has ten thousand, and savings has twenty thousand. So now, if I want to access the elements, so let's say I want to say, okay, fine, give me what is the value of stocks? It will say your stocks are ten thousand. Now I say, oh, I forgot to add in the portfolio. There was cryptocurrencies as well, and they were amounting to fifteen thousand. Or fifteen hundred. So we'll say our client assets, and we'll add another item to the dictionary called crypto and its value. So whatever is your 
dictionary, whatever you have called your dictionary, complete dictionary, then you add a key and you add a value. It's as simple as that. And once you print it, this will be added. So it says, oh, okay. Now it has a crypto value of 1500 as well. Now, what if I want to delete an item? Let's say the person took out all the savings. I'll say, okay, fine. Now delete from my dictionary, delete from client assets, savings. So that's how you define it. DEL is a delete client assets from client assets, delete the key savings. And when I print all these client assets, I'll say, okay, it's so just real estate stocks and crypto. The savings is not there. Now, what if you want to delete the whole dictionary? So I'll say just delete my dictionary. And once you print it, you will get nothing because now nothing exists. So therefore, dictionary is a key value player. So what you need to remember from all this lecture is dictionary is a key value pair. You have a key, you have its value. How can you take out a key and a value? How can you take a value corresponding to a key and how you can add and delete a key value? That's all you need to remember in dictionary. In the list, you need to remember how to use an index in the list, how to do indexing in the list. So once you are done with both these concepts, you are pretty much good to go further. And in the next video, we'll talk about tuples, sets, and we will talk about our uh, tuples, our sets and strings. Once we are done with this, then we'll move forward to our loops, conditional loops, logical operators, files. And once we have covered all this basic ground, then we will move to the libraries like NumPy and Pandas. So still a long way to go, but keep following this. And if you have any doubts or you want to ask me anything, you can either contact me on the on LinkedIn from link from description below, or you can comment down in the comment section below. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much. And please like, share and subscribe.